Okay, so now let's go and get into talking a little bit more about extremas as well as the zeros. And in this case, we're gonna use graphing technology. Now, a lot of my class, we do use a TI, but I don't really want to restrict this video for those who have to use a TI. I just wanna kind of look at um, the, you know, the way to kind of uh, look at the shape of the polynomial and determine the extrema and the zeros um, just by using graphing technology because basically what on your class or what your class requires is going to be different and there's tons of tutorials you know on how to use a ti but i don't want to restrict it just to one type of calculator um, and then plus desmos is free and it's very powerful so i think it makes the most amount of sense for this video just to focus on something that everybody can use and there's not really any restrictions to it all right, so the kind of the key that I want to look into with this is when we're looking at the, you know, the extrema of the graph, we're looking for those max and minimums, the absolute max, the absolute minimum um, of the graph. And also we want to look at the zeros, which, you know, another thing is looking at the um, real zeros are going to be the x-intercepts. Okay, so based on what we kind of talked about in the last one, we've looked at, you know, the end behavior. Hopefully you see that this is odd and even. So without really having to look up, you can say, oh, this graph is going to fall left, rise right. Um, hopefully you see that there is a maximum number of three zeros and there are going to be a, a maximum number of two extrema. So what we're going to do is just determine the coordinates of the extrema as well as the zeros um, using graphing technology. So basically what we could do is to use is, you know, graph this. And when we're graphing this function here, okay, you can see here that, um, I guess I'll have to zoom out a little bit more. It's, uh, no, okay, it doesn't want to do that. Um, you can see, oops, no, this is not going to be fun. All right, I'll use my cursor. Um, so we can see here that this graph falls left and rises right, right? And you can see that the graph continues doing that. And that's important on that end behavior because our extrema, which we can see we have two extrema here, um, our extrema is not going to be absolutes at all. They're going to be uh, relative or... Um, uh, relative or local extrema. So there's a couple different ways that we can write this and actually I'm going to try to um, Actually, that's not going to work. How I'm going to want to do that. Hmm. Oh, you know what I probably should have done? I probably should have wrote them out Let me actually write them down on my sheet of paper. So I have a negative 1.758 comma 6.469 and the reason why I'm doing this is I want to show you a couple different ways to write this now in my definition or at least in my um, in my directions I said write the coordinates for 69 okay so that's kind of important we're gonna be talking about the coordinates but then we also talked about the zeros where the real zeros are really just going to be the x-intercepts so let's go and take a look at these x-intercepts negative 2.596 um, x equals negative uh, 0.659 and then we have x equals 1.754. Now, the important thing to notice is obviously this graphing technology, you know, we have it rounded, um, or at least they wrote the answer to three decimal places. So they could have been naturally uh, rounded, or they could be the value. You know, obviously there's ways for us to be able to determine this, which we'll talk about later. But, um, you know, obviously in your class, it could just say round to the nearest whole value or to the nearest tenth or thousandth or hundredth, you know, whatever may be the case. In this case, we have Desmos to the three decimal places. So that's just the way that I'm going to use it in my um, answer. Now, when we're looking into, you know, writing the coordinates, the important thing that we actually want to think about is the coordinates of extrema is the x and the y coordinate. So we can state that we have a, um, a absolute maximum. I'm sorry, it's not an absolute. I just said there's no absolute max. That's a um, relative max, right? Because it's not the absolute highest power or point. So we could say there's a relative max at the coordinate point, negative... 1.758 and the y coordinate was 6.469 okay and there is a relative min we could say at or sorry not at we'd want to say relative min relative min of here is like the point 0.758 and negative 9.469, okay? Now we could say that there are zeros, so we could say like zeros, zeros occur 
at, and we can use this language. We could also say like the relative max occurs at x equals, and then that value. So you could also say it occurs, and again, that really just depends on the language that they're using. So if it says, you know, where does the max or minimum occur? We're not gonna talk about the y value. We're gonna say it occurs at x equals, you know, negative 1.7, you know, 58. If I say what is the maximum value or what is the relative maximum value of the function, then we say the relative maximum value is, you know, y equals 6.469. So it really kind of gets into semantics here. Um, the zeros occur at, and we're just going to use, um, I'm just going to occur at x equals, and let's just write these down as a negative 2.596, x equals a negative 0 0.659, and x equals 1.754. And again, you can go back to this graph to kind of confirm your, you know, results from there. All right, let's go and take a look at the next one. Um, based on what we know for this next one here, we know that we have an end behavior that's going to fall left, falls right. We know that there's a maximum number of four zeros, and there's a maximum number of three extrema. So let's go and take a look back at the graph and kind of see, you know, what this graph looks like. Okay, so this graph here, jeez, oh, looks like we got to zoom out. Actually, let's look at, let's have our two zeros. So I didn't pick ones that have very, very nice zeros, as you can see. Um, so our zeros are at negative 4.541. Again, that's the x value. So you could say the zeros occur at x equals. And the other thing that's important about this is notice what the y values are. This is something we talked about you know, earlier. The y values are zero. And that's very, very important for us to kind of remember when we're looking for the x-intercepts. The x value is obviously where the graph crosses. And the y value is always going to be zero. Um, now, as we kind of scroll up here and looking at this extrema, now we know that there's a maximum number of three extrema here, right? Because the power was four. There we go. Okay. And now if you look at this, since the end behavior falls, that falls right. This is important. Since we have our end behavior falls left and falls right, since it's that even degree, we notice that we have a absolute maximum value, right? So that M behavior can also help us allude to, is there going to be a absolute maximum or minimum? Notice when the power was odd, there, there was no way for us to have any absolute um, extrema because it's gonna continue laughter and continue, uh, continue going negative and continue going positive, either to the left or right. But when we have a even power, we are able now to, it's possible to go ahead and have a absolute uh, maximum graph or it's gonna be an absolute minimum. So the coordinate points here is we have an absolute max here. Um, you can see here, it, this is a absolute, or I'm sorry, a relative minimum because it's not the lowest point, but it's a point within a certain interval. And then here's going to be a relative max. So let's just write those points here. So negative 3.273. And I'm just writing those points so I can put them on my worksheet. So when you want something to be printed out, you can kind of like verify. Um, verify those are the coordinate points. So 14.246, and then we have a relative min at zero, at negative 0 0.132 comma 8.865. Okay, so now let's go back to ours, and I'm just gonna write down a couple different things. Um, kinda think I might've got a little confusing when I did my um, last example, so let me kinda clarify. All right, so let's, Let's keep this as at uh, this, okay? So I said determine the coordinate points. So that's exactly what we want to do. Determine the coordinate points. Boom. Relative max there, a relative min, you know, and I don't know of. I can just say at. I don't really like that, you know. Relative min. There's the coordinate points, right? But we could also say there is a um, a maximum value. Like another way that we talk about extrema is we could talk about, hey, there is a, you know, maximum value of the graph, you know, so we can say max value. Now we could say what the y value is, or we could say, you know, I could say what the y value is, a maximum value of, and that maximum point was, you know, 67, oops. I was gonna say maximum value of y equals 67.87. We could say there's a maximum value at, and we say x equals, and this would be the x coordinate, negative 3.273, or we could just say, hey, there is a 
um, absolute maximum point, you know, at this, and this is what I'm asking for in the, um, you could say absolute max of just this coordinate point. The reason why I wanted to kind of go through this extra little steps here is just to make sure that, you know, you understand the difference of the questions. If they're asking for the maximum value, you want to give the Y coordinate. If they're asking the location of where there's that um, extrema, you're looking for the X coordinate. And if they're obviously saying, you know, what is the coordinate point where there's an absolute value, then you'd provide the X and the Y. Typically though, these are going to be the two types of questions that you are going to be asked. So not very often are you going to be asked what exactly is the coordinate. So that's why I wanted to kind of to go in a little bit more in depth with that. Um, there is the relative max. Let's just finish this off as far as how I asked it, um, which was at, which is just give me the coordinate points. And then 14.246. And there was a relative min at negative 0 0.132 and 8.865. And you could say zeros, I think that's what I asked, right? Okay, and we could say the, yeah. we could say the zeros. Now, rather than listing them all out, a lot of times you'll see things written as like set notation. So you can just see like, here's the zeros as written as a set. And there was only uh, two zeros and those were negative four point five four one comma two point zero two six so I wanted to kind of go through this video even though it's fairly simple since we're using graphing technology but just to talk about the different ways that um, you will see information written and as well as you know how the question can ask will is going to determine um, the way that we're going to want to write our answer which is very very important so that is example or the final example for at least our extreme and graph now we'll kind of get into uh, some word problems to kind of really round out our understanding of polynomials and how they can help us.